Reverend Kolai Wosho, and um, it's such a joy to be with you. And it's such a joy to bring this to your knowledge, to your participation and involvement. I want to first of all thank all of you who are hooking up to this broadcast, this recording, that you're going to engage and invest your time with us in this series of teachings. Now, what's my objective in these teachings or these sharings with you? It's mentoring. I found out that a lot of people do not have a personal development element with their Christian faith. And because of that, a lot of people find it difficult to handle the challenges that come their way. And so I've been involved for the last so many years in mentoring, discipling, and helping people to be come who God wants them to be, to be successful and all of that. And so instead of the repetition of doing it from place to place and time to time, I decided that we should do it on a recorded way so that we can direct people to the recording online, whatever avenue the media people find fit, so that we can have a series of recordings like this, short, but to the point where you can be helped. So today, the first one is laying foundations. I've been involved, like I said, in mentoring people from various nations across the world. And I know that the need is increasing, especially for men to be mentored. And so this recording is designed to help you, first of all, to lay the right foundation. You see, for many people, the orientation that they have about their Christian faith can affect their whole life. If you were born again under the ministry of an evangelist, and that evangelist just made it like, if you get saved, that's all that there is to it. You're on your way to heaven. And whereas he's doing his job, and that's the anointing he has to heal, to min do miracles and lead you to salvation. But that's not the end of the story. In fact, that's the beginning. But Christ has a plan for your life. God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. And if that foundation is not properly laid, I'm sorry, no matter how long you've been born again, it's still a faulty foundation. And so today we're looking at laying foundations. And it's going to take a while because, you know, to lay a proper foundation is not a 15-minute message. It can take years to lay proper foundations. Why? Because every one of us has been affected by our natures, nurtures, and for all you care, our cultures. So depending on where you are listening to me and where you are from and how you were brought up, and most of the time you don't really know what is in you until something happens and you are reacting to it. And that's really how you're going to have self-discovery. Because mentoring is about discovering who you are, what you have become, and what you should become to become who God wants you to become. <laughs> what you should become to do what God wants you to do. I mean, let's just take a cursory note at, at the different people, different personalities in the Bible. Joseph, for instance. Joseph was a god that was a favorite of his father when he was young, Joseph in the book of Genesis. He had a dream and he saw himself standing tall and everybody else bowing to him. Because of that, he was envied and eventually his brother sold him as a slave. His brother sold him for slavery in Egypt. And in Egypt, he conducted himself so well and he grew up. And in growing up, he found that he had to pass the test again of Potiphar's wife and all of that. And those of you who know the story, you know what I'm getting at. Joseph was not ready for ruling Egypt when he was age 17. And it was not a fact of chronological age. In other words, he did not become age 30 just because he sat down, did nothing, and by age 30, he was ready. No, he went through a process. And that's the process that hopefully mentoring can help you handle because you will have to go through a process if you're going to become who God wants you to be. It's not possible to just be who God wants you to be just because you have faith or just because you know a few scriptures or because somebody laid hands on you. You will go through a process. And it's that process that mentoring is meant to help you to accomplish, God willing. So the first thing you want to look at today is to say, why did Jesus come? A lot of us will say Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You're right. Jesus came so that we can go to heaven. You're also right. Jesus came so that we can become children of God. You're right. What I've chose, chosen to divide into three different compartments so that you and I can see and look closely at each of them, God willing, to help us lay the right foundation. So that in laying this right foundation, 
you can understand your own orientation. What do I mean by that? Everybody has his own orientation. Some people are oriented towards miracles. Just, you know, if God is with me, I'll have miracles. Some people are oriented towards prosperity. Depending on where and how you came to the Lord, the emphasis that was given to you when you got born again, that emphasis can affect your whole perspective of God. And if you're not careful, you will imagine that that is all that there is to it. No. If somebody gets healed, for instance, and through the healing, he knows God loves him and he accepts Christ as his Lord and Savior. He's born again genuinely, but his orientation is that of God is a healer. And that's true. If somebody was broke and God, through a miracle, met him at the point of his need and he began, began to prosper, he said, God is a prosperous being. And that's true as well. If somebody has nothing like that and he just knows with a peace of mind that he's going to heaven, so God wants to take him to hell. And that's all true. But between the time you got born again and the time you're going to leave this earth, God has a plan for your life. How you go about that plan is up to what you understand. So depending on your orientation, depending on your disposition, and depending on how you've been taught and trained and discipled, you need to understand. Now, no orientation is bad in itself. All you need to know is to know the limits of your orientation and what that orientation is. Every orientation needs to undergo changes. Joseph, for instance, that I gave, he had to undergo changes because he knew. I mean, he, he was daddy's pet. He couldn't be daddy's pet in Potiphar's house. His orientation had to change to rise up and match the challenges of his time. So once again, we're back to this place where we say, what are the three reasons? Number one, divine exchange. What does that mean? Divine exchange simply means Christ became who you were so you can become who he is. Christ took your place on the cross. He bore your shame. He bore your sickness. He bore your pain. And we've had messages on this. So you can go on our website to www.fowm.org and look for messages on foundations and things like that. And it will help you to understand that you need a proper foundation. What do I mean by foundation? Foundation is the basis for anything. You see, what's the foundation of my relationship with you? That you and I are friends. That's the basis that you and I are members of the same church. That's a basis. So foundation simply means what's the basis? So what's the basis of my relationship with God? It is because of the finished work of Calvary. Now, what does that mean? It means that Christ died for me. And I need to appropriate that on a personal level, as well as a corporate level, but first of all, on a personal level, because he died for me as a person. He bore my shame. He bore my sickness, my disease. He bore my poverty. All of these are in scriptures. But if you don't build that consciousness into your mind, the basis for which you relate with God will not be the finished work of Calvary. It will just be your own effort, your own trial and error and things like that. So that's why we talk about foundation, that Christ took your place. How many of you know that he bore your shame? He bore your rejection. For instance, when he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani on the cross of Calvary, that was rejection. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? No, so heaven forsook him. The people he was dying for did not understand him. So earth and heaven rejected him. Why? So you can be accepted. So Christ died for you. And that means a whole lot more for those who are knowledgeable about it. So I want to challenge you, first of all, that you need to lay hold on materials that will help you know what exactly Christ did for you. The scripture that is very popular is the one in 2 Corinthians 5, when it says, If any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things are passed away. But the verses before that says, He died for all, because he's a, he's in that one died, all died. Now, if you don't understand spirit, soul, body, you can be confused about that again. That your spirit man was identified with Christ on the cross of Calvary. Your spirit man was identified with him in his death, burial, and resurrection. Now that he's raised from the dead, your spirit man is identified with him. That you have a new life because you believed in Jesus. Now, the point I want to emphasize in this particular uh, aspect of Christ coming and dying and divine exchange aspect is the fact that what we become in Christ is not a function of our effort, first and foremost, is a function of our believing in the finished work of Calvary. He took my place so that I can take his place. So now I'm a, a child of God. Now I'm a new creature in Christ. Now I am I, I, I'm, 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 I'm welcome in the presence of God. Now I am the healed, I'm the blessed, I'm the saved. <laughs> now all of these things are not done just because it is you and I. It is done because that is who the new creation is. The new creation is the thing that has been done for us. In other words, 
I can have a general perspective of my new creation and I can get into it. Maybe I'll just stay with Divine Exchange today. I can get into that new creation reality. What do I mean by that? Through meditation of the scriptures, confession, I can build into my consciousness new creation realities. And why I want to explain that very well is because a lot of people think, well, it's working for others, it's not working for me. It's not about that. It's about me knowing that. It's like if you look at who we are in Adam, we're all sinners in Adam. It doesn't matter the kind of sin, we're all inherited the nature of sin in Adam. Now, that in itself means that there could be peculiarities of my own sinfulness. But the basic general rule is that all of us are sinners. So also when it comes to the new creation, there could be peculiarities of, as to how I express my new creation. But the general basic rule is that the new creation is a creation of God that is different from the old creation. What do I mean by that? The new creation is accepted in the beloved. The new creation is, 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 is welcome in the presence of God. The new creation has been delivered from shame. The new creation has been set free from the powers of darkness. The new creation has been made to the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The new creation has so many advantages and so many uh, 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 sense of identity that it takes me knowing that I am a new creation to confess that into my consciousness until my system begins to recognize, hey, I'm a new creature. All things are passed away. I mean, passed away. I mean, Satan has no authority over you any longer if you're a new creature. I mean, he has no authority. I mean, the scriptures are full of who we are. We have a new identity. We have a new authority. And listen, that identity is found in Christ. That authority is found in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll do it. In another portion in John 14, he said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. And when Peter was to heal in the book of Acts chapter 3, he said, silver or gold of I none, but such as I have. How many of us are conscious that we have the name of Jesus? How many of us are conscious of who we are? This sense of identity runs very, very deep. And a lot of people have no clue how to go about it. So in, in this broadcast, now I just want to share with you that you must be established in who you are in Christ. You must be established as a new creature. You must be established by meditation. In 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 17, by meditation in Isaiah 53, from verse 3, when he talks about he, he bore your bruises, he, for, by his stripes you are healed, and all of that. In, you meditate in these scriptures until you have a sense of being a new person. In the whole of Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2, it talks about who we are in Christ. So you want to find out who you are in Christ and make it your foundational reality that you meditate in the finished work of Calvary. So you wake up in the morning talking to yourself, knowing in your mind, I'm a new creature. All things are passed away. I tell you what, this is half of the problem solved. Just knowing that Satan has no authority over you any longer. Whatever you have accepted that Satan can and will do to you, you can begin to say no more. No more. From this moment on, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Satan's authority in my life, gone. Satan's ability to hurt me, gone. The only thing that remains now is for me to permit Satan to do anything in my life. Because as far as I'm concerned in the new creation, he has no authority over the new creation. So I'm glad to let you know that. And that's just laying the foundation today. Uh, if you have any questions along these lines, you can email us and let us know, you know what questions you have. Because this is, like I said, this is laying the foundation. And we're going to keep laying this foundation until we're sure you got it right. And until I come your way next time, it's such a joy to be here and that you've chosen to invest your time with us in this mentoring series. And I trust that these few things you've heard has given you something to go think about, challenge you. What are the things you must do now? Find the scriptures, meditate on them and confess them to become a consciousness in your thinking that you are a new creature. God bless you real good.
Let's pray together. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray for my brothers especially who are hearing this. I pray that their lives will never be the same again. From this day forward, the consciousness of being new creatures will be settled in their hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.